35. Why true? Biblical confession is unpopular. Confession is no longer a popular subject, neither with Catholic nor Protestants. In Christian circles, because confession in the biblical sense means, first, a confession of sins, and second, a confession of Christ, a confession of faith, it is our concern now to examine the reason or reasons why the confession of sin or sins is now avoided in any biblical sense because the failure to confess our sin means that we do not truly recognize our Saviour from sin. One of the characteristics of peoples in the second half of the 20th century is their desire and lust for instant gratification. This implies a related outlook an insistence on no frustration. In my childhood, I knew of no child who ever rejected the food set before him. None dared do so because the punishment would have been immediate. Perhaps it was because I was in an area of immigrants, mainly from Sweden, Portugal, Italy and Armenia. As an Armenian, I was reminded if I failed to devour what was set before me, starving fellow Armenians who would thank God for the food I had before me. This was not a statement a child could answer. Other children, non-Armenians, told me that they, or more often their fathers, on complaining of the frequency of a cheap food, were reminded also of the starving Armenians. Mothers then had an easier job in preparing meals. More than a few very aged women have told me that mothers today have a difficult job with economy and cooking because of the picky adults and children. This is a small matter, but it is a part of the general rejection by young and old of any frustration. Give me what I want. This is the requirement of children and parents. Do not frustrate me. This goes hand in hand with the demand for instant gratification. For example, because of their generally undisciplined nature, it is common for young males, and older ones as well, to believe that sex in men is an ungovernable drive and urge. Such a belief is an indictment of God. It is an insistence that chastity is a physical impossibility. I recall when I was young, hearing an arrogant pastor treat male sexual offences lightly, insisting it was all due to those male gonads. He was, in that opinion, rather vocal, and so rightly not well thought of. Today, however, schools, counsellors and pastors are too often ready to share this view. They trivialise sin, and they trivialise the Bible. What room is there for confession if a person's sin is due to his or her biology? Again, what if the excuse rendered is hereditary or biology? environments, or some like factor. What then remains to be confessed? What need is there then to confess anything other than God's offence because he made me so, how can I help it? Confession is replaced by the indictment of God. Sin and confession are both trivialised and grace as well. Everything is reduced to a matter of words, a simple formula, no restitution, no penalty for sin and no thought of sin's offence to God as well as to men. To cite some instances of this first, a few years ago, a woman separated from her husband and divorced him for incest with their very young daughter. The daughter is in her teens, the mother unmarried and working. Members of the former church are still praying faithfully that the woman and her husband will be reunited after all, they say, he only did it once, and he's sorry. Biblical law speaks of incest in such texts as Leviticus 18, 6 to 18, 20, 11 and 12, 14, 17, 20 and 21, Deuteronomy 22, 30, 27, 20, 22 to 23. These false believers, however, tend to believe anything other than God's word. Second, a woman learns that her husband had committed adultery with a woman known for her promiscuity. She returns home from a visit with her mother, learned of the brief affair, 
and locked her husband out of the house. Like her, he was a member of a large fundamentalist church. She decided to divorce because of his adultery. He had also contracted a venereal disease and had undergone treatment. On top of that, she feared that AIDS might be involved. His statement was, I've said I'm sorry, so why doesn't she take me back and sleep with me? The church agreed. Both the church and the husband trivialised sin. He had excuses for his sin which the church agreed with. His wife was away for some time, caring for a sick mother, and so he fell into temptation. The truth is, he welcomed it. Not surprisingly, this church also trivialised the gospel, preached easy believism, cheap grace, and a God who was always there to help us, not to judge us. Another related example of the dereliction of many churches can be cited. Because portions of this work on confession appeared in the Chalcedon Reports in 1991, I learned second-hand of a pastor's opinion that Rush Dooney is on the road to Rome, If to believe that sin must be confessed is Romanism, then these people are not reading their Bibles. The lust for instant gratification has meant that popular culture has substituted drugs for confession. The result of a biblical confession is restitution and then absolution. This requires a change in the man. He must see himself as a sinner, a transgressor of God's law, He must recognise that he has offended God and this must grieve him for having so abused God's gift of life. He must then make restitution. If, because of death or some other reason, the sinner cannot make restitution to the offended person or his family, he must make it to the Lord. As against this, drugs offer an instant euphoria. Sins, problems and duties disappear and a cheap bliss prevails. This leads to addiction, because the euphoria of drugs is an escape from responsibility into a godlike world of no responsibility and no guilt. Another factor important in the decline of confession is the prevalence of the myth of evolution. This myth has seeped into churches which still call themselves Bible-believing It is basic to the perspective of men outside the church. Thus, David Loyne, in writing about the Soviet agent George Blake, who defected from Britain to Russia, states that, as of 1991, he still vindicates his noble aim of the 1950s to assist the Soviet Union to build a new society. Blake, the would-be priest, has no sense of his own sin, It is mankind's which has failed, not communism. My belief is that humanity is not ready for socialism at this state. This shields against remorse for ruining the lives of the people he betrayed and sending many to their deaths. This attitude is not unusual. It exists outside the church and within it. I was a seminary student when I prominent pastor, assuming that I was a modernist because I was a student at the Pacific School of Religion, told me that mankind was developing as was God, and so a new sexual morality was necessary, one grounded in love, not law. When he discovered what I believed, he became my continuing enemy. Given these things, the place of confession in the life of the Christian cannot be restored unless our perspective is rigorously biblical. The culture of no frustration and instant gratification must give way to godly responsibility and patience in faith. We must see the decline of confession as one aspect of a general theological decay and of a widespread refusal to believe in the living God rather than the God of man's silly imagination.